Hello there. Uh, right now you're probably wondering, saying, Glenn, what do you have these wine bottles here for? And uh, a feather, and an odd looking pair of scissor style tongs, and a bowl with some ice and ice water. Well, very simple. Uh, I'm going to do wine tonging. Uh, many, many years ago, a customer wanted me to make a pair of tongs for him and was uh, going to be used to open a uh, wine bottle. And in this technique, what they do is they actually shear the glass off below the cork. And I think the idea is, is because in, in a, maybe a fine bottle of wine, the cork is very old. And if you try to, if you use a corkscrew or you try some method to pull it out, you might deposit cork within the wine. And then that, obviously that's not, not, maybe not good. So uh, in this technique, you know, you shear the glass off below the cork so none of that cork can get in the, into the wine. I, personally, I think this is more of a parlor trick anything else and I wouldn't do that for any bottle of wine I was going to tr going to drink so but um, you know anyway recently another customer has, has uh, spoken about wine tonging and so I thought that this would make a good video and be fun for me as well so um, and then as far as this tongue uh, this actually a customer a while back wanted me to make tongs for picking up charcoals to deposit in a in a, one of those tall Arabian style pipes. I think they're, they're called, it's a hookah pipe or something like that. And, you know, so this was basically a prototype for him and, you know, a scissor style prototype and that it never panned out. So uh, as I thought of this wine tonguing video, uh, or, you know, doing this wine tonguing and I, and I thought, you know, I don't feel like making a new tongue for this purpose. And I saw this, I thought, wow, this would be perfect with just some simple modifications. So basically what I have to do is you know, bend, bend these jaws back 90 degrees and then make them wrap around so that they fit snugly on the neck of a wine bottle just below where the cork is. So I've, I've measured that and that's probably like an inch and an eighth or an inch and a quarter right about there. So I'll, I'll modify these tongues for that purpose. And so basically, how do you go about this? Okay, you, uh, you heat the jaw of the tongues. And in this case, because these tongues are very short, you, know, you have to be careful for heat radiating towards this end. But it, the jaws don't need to be very hot. You can do it over a gas stove and that should be plenty hot. And I think the ideal wine tongs uh, probably, you know, for this purpose, are ha maybe have wooden handles so that heat doesn't radiate to the, to the handle end so quickly. But this will serve the purpose for what I just want to have some fun and try this out. So I'm not a wine drinker. Also, these bottles I got from a friend of mine. Uh, so, you know, this is, I'm just going to give it a try on these three and then I'm going to get a new bottle of wine, a cheap new bottle of wine, and give it a go on that. You know, maybe, uh, you know, what they call a bottle of, uh, what they used to call two buck chuck. It's probably five buck chuck now. And maybe in Taiwan, it's maybe five buck, five buck chang. You know, so, but, uh, yeah, so basically heat your, heat your tongue, and then you, you know, you grasp it, you know, right below the cork. And you hold it there for a few seconds and then you want to make sure that it's making contact all the way around and in one spot only and along a very thin section so I have to thin this tongue out a bit <clears throat> on the joint here and then once that's heated for you know I don't know exactly the time I'm going to experiment I just remember it was just you know maybe maybe 10 seconds then you know what I did in the past was you take an ice cube and then you just rub it you just work it along where you just held it with the tongue and that should shear the glass. The, ch the, the change in temperature cracks it, you know, the sudden change in temperature. So, and you know, there was another gentleman on YouTube who said that, oh, actually the preferred method is to use a feather. And that what you do is you dip the feather in, in ice water and then rub that along. And that may be better even because then your fingers stay away from the glass. You don't have to get so close like you would with the, the ice cube. So, yeah, I'm going to, you know, give this a go. I'll, I'll sort this tongue out, and I'll practice on these three and let you see. And, you know, if you would like to try this, just be very careful. Or maybe don't try it, okay? If you want to drink wine, just open it with a corkscrew. Um, and if anyone has further information about wine tonguing, you know, please let us know in the comments below. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so we'll see how it goes. Have some fun. And just, like I said, just as a disclaimer, you know, I'm not going to say don't try this at home. Do whatever you want in your own home, but just be very careful. That's all. I personally would not open a bottle of wine like this that I wanted to drink for fear that some it might not shear cleanly enough and glass might be deposited within the wine. 
although I guess you could strain it, but then that completely seems to defeat the purpose. You know, you could also strain out cork if you wanted to. So, yeah, I don't know, you know, how far this dates back or who, you know, like I said, if this is just something someone thought about because, and I've mentioned this in a, in a previous video, that glass is very much like steel in many ways, that it can be hardened and it can be tempered and it can be cracked if it goes from one extreme of temperature to another. So, yeah, let's, let's get it going and see what happens. And uh, that's about that. fooling around with these tongs trying to get the jaws right but I just because this back end I want it to be 90 degrees a sharp bend and this steel it just cracked this is uh, actually stainless steel so goodbye <laughs> so, that's that you know it's just way too thin for me to keep fooling around on this like that so uh, yeah that's it well I didn't want to have to make a tong but now I gotta make a tong so such is life about the 28 millimeters or about an inch and an eighth. 
and then they almost come together and I'll just hammer them a little more and bring those in so they just just about touch. So they just form like maybe a little offset where I can rivet those together. And then maybe on this end, you know, I can, this is, this is such short stuff that I might, uh, you know, I might do that whole wooden thing, you know, wooden handles. So, back in. This is, this is just mild steel, so this is incredibly weak, it's so thin, but like I said, I'm just monkeying around, and so I'm just going to drill and, you know, get a little pin in there, a little nail or something, and rivet that together, and then that should fit really nicely around there, and then I'll, uh, like I said, the handle end, maybe I'll leave it this way for now, or maybe I'll, uh, you know, I'll put some wood on the handles to make it look nice, but uh, yeah, so back off and run. Yeah, I found this little tiny rivet I made, who knows when, maybe when I made that other, that, that pipe tongue, that works, you know, I've drilled this so that works really well. Actually drilling this was probably not too smart because it weakens it quite a bit. I should have just punched these holes, but yeah, this rivet will work well for this. So I'll just I'll heat it up a little bit and get it in there. And then, you know, that's pretty much it. And then, like I said, I'll figure out what I want to do on the handle end. So. so weak right in this area if I was making this you know for a customer I would use heavier stock and then thin this out quite a bit but I'm just kind of not so much in a rush I just got a lot of other things to do so yeah I'm gonna get that fit just right to that and actually let me grab a wine bottle here and see yeah so it's got to come in just a little bit more and actually want to remove this. So, yeah, let me get it done. Just about perfect then. I'll just grab that just right. Okay, so that's probably that. I'm gonna clean this up a, I'm gonna clean this up a bit and I'm gonna actually maybe just uh, thin it out a little bit more here on either side just so that um, it, the section that touches on the uh, on the neck of the bottle is not very thick, just a very thin as thin as possible. But not too thin because you want to make sure you, you retain heat. So yeah, it's nice freely moving and I'll get the you know the handles here in line and uh, yeah so that's about that uh, let's see how it goes okay I finished the tongue and here it is uh, just very simple I, uh, I had some uh, pieces of leather so I just wrapped that for the handle just to keep it so the heat you know stays away from your hand a little bit better but I just you know, I just quickly epoxied that together. I'll kind of, I'll come in and see if you can see the tongue and the uh, the leather wrapping there. So very simple. I've noticed that it uh, it fits some 
bottles better than others. Like this one, it fits just about right, and then the others, they're they're a little they're tapered a little bit differently. And then I purchased this bottle, a whole eight dollars, so more than five. <laughs> and this is the uh, just the cheap French wine, Les Vieux Cedres, which is the old cedars. So I like cedar trees, so maybe I'll like the wine. So yeah, we're gonna give it a go. I'll try on these and see what happens. But first, I also wanted to I wanted to uh, give a shout out to Jacqueline and Mike uh, Bylan or Ilan. I'm not sure how to say your last name. I appreciate the donation. Thanks very much. And I also wanted to give a shout out to a, a good friend of mine, uh, Denny Nelson. He's always uh, supported my work through purchasing uh, some of my tools, even though he's perfectly capable of. of, of making them himself so really appreciate that and also I wanted to thank Mr. Leo for giving me these uh, wine bottles so Leo uh, so yeah anyway let me get to it and we'll see what happens all right <clears throat> first on deck is this bottle so set that there and then since I said you know I was saying that the tongue doesn't seem to fit perfectly around each bottle so what I'll do is I'll kind of rotate it just a little bit to make sure the heat is evenly distrib distributed around the, uh, the neck. And then I'm going to use, uh, I'm using my forge and I'll just have the, the tongue jaw just at the opening of the forge but you know th this can be done just like I said on a gas stove. And uh, I might even try that. I might switch to the gas stove if this doesn't work. So uh, I'm really winging it. I don't know what heat I should make this. So see how it goes. I've heated this pretty hot to the point where I see some color. So here goes nothing. Just rotating it gently, trying to stay in the same line. Uh oh. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Whoa, look at that! Are you kidding me? I didn't even put the ice cube on it. What a cut. Look at that. It sheared it pretty cleanly the other end. Look at that. So that just tells me I might have held it on just a second too long there. You know, I probably should have just touched it a little bit less time, but this, it worked. But you see right there is a little crack. A little crack right there, but amazing. So I would say this first one was a reasonable success. Let's move on to the next. Okay. Next batter up. And this bottle is m more similar the neck to the one I purchased, the full bottle. So we'll see how it goes. This is, I think, a little too hot. So I'm just going to wait a second. Yeah, I'm kind of amazed how that just sheared right off by itself. But I think also glass quality might have something to do with it. So. Let's see. This one, I'm gonna have to finagle more. Get it right about there. Turn. Turn. You can almost feel the glass melting. This one doesn't feel as good. And this one has a seam right down the side there. I can see that seam. If you can see that. I'm gonna call that good on this one. This is the dangerous part. Yo, crack. This one, yeah, it cracked as soon as I touched it, but it cracked on the inside. So, mm. let me get a glove. I don't want to bang this. Yeah, it didn't crack completely through. Right here is a spot. So I don't know. <sighs> let me put a glove on it. See maybe if I can just that definitely would be not not a success. Oh, whoa! Are you kidding me? Actually better than the other! Absolutely perfect. 
a little raggedness, but absolutely no chips. Absolutely zero. Perfect. And by the way, I'm wearing eye protection. So, all right. Basically two for two. Okay, third practice model coming up. Third one, oops, third one is uh, also a little bit more of a narrow neck. So let me get that in. Let me get the uh, tongue back heat, heated up. Okay, third man up. Oops, whoops. Yeah, I didn't grab it at a good spot there. Hopefully that doesn't crack in two places. Hold it, turn, hold it, turn, hold it, turn, hold it, turn. Let's try the old ice feather. Nada. Uh oh, nothing. Grab the ice cube. Nothing. Alright, I'm gonna try this one again. Keep this thing back up. Okay. <clears throat> See how it goes. This one I gotta be very careful. Let's see. Back in the same location, I hope. Oh, I can feel it kind of melting. Or just at least it feels softer. Come on, baby. I'm gonna call that good. Nice. Yeah. Oh, cracked. Cracked. Maybe it'll be just like the other one and just pull off. It, it looks, <clears throat> yeah, the crack is consistent and it's all on the interior. It doesn't, this, these bottles are fairly thick. My, my friend, Mr. Leo, he drinks very nice wine. So I, I imagine even the glass is probably better quality. So hold on, let me grab the glove. Let's see. I think it'll come off per absolutely perfect. This one is the best of them all. That's pretty thick glass, see? All right, the bird is chirping, and you know what he's saying is, I wanna see you do the real deal. So, to that we go. You know, I'm doing this, and I just finished the third bottle there successfully, and this guy, blacksmith bird here, keeps chirping at me. Well, now he's going over here. And he wants, uh, he wants to see what's going on, but actually he really just wants a piece of banana. So, hold on, buddy, I got one more bottle to go, all right? The old Cedars is on, is at, in the batter's box. Keep the tongue. And I'm just placing the tongue, like I said, just at the opening of my forge, because the metal is so thin. But I, you know, I'm gonna try to just do exactly what I did. You know, just see a little color, a dull red, and try to hold it maybe a little bit longer. So, we'll see. It is. The moment of truth. Turn it. Oh, I can feel it really melting. Oh. See how it doesn't connect in that front end quite well? So that's why I'm turning it just a little bit. Keep that upright. I forgot there's actually wine in this. Three, two, one. Five. Oh! Mama, <laughs> look at that. Got a little bit of wine in my face, but absolutely a clean cut. A little, not, no, nothing sheared off like little pieces, just a little jagged. But look at that. There it is, the cork is in there. See, I should have, I held it too long. I only put this piece down so it doesn't crack anymore. And uh, I have, what I think is I held it on too long. I should have uh, stopped about five seconds ago and then you know maybe it would have come off by itself or maybe uh you know just use a little bit of the ice cube technique but yeah there it is a little vino look at that yeah it's actually looks fine i'm gonna take a sip even just to prove just to prove ah it was a good month <laughs> yeah thanks for watching fellas
I would consider this a success. If you give it a go, be very careful. Thanks.